So today we're going to be talking about the cause of homelessness. There's always a study coming out. There's always somebody spouting off. There's always something about, ah, uh, it's not the drugs. Ah, uh, it's not the crazy people running around the road, the, the streets. It's lack of affordable housing. Okay, that is definitely, if, if you don't have affordable housing, okay, it's going to be tough. If you're not making money and you're on the, you're on whatever dope that you're on, here's an old school term, right? Dope, just a cross the board term for any kind of drugs. If you're on the dope and you're not working, it's going to be tough to afford a home in a West Coast city like Seattle or Portland or LA. All right. But this study says, ah, oh, yeah, Detroit. Doesn't have much in the way in homelessness, yet it's still got all the same traits other cities have. Do we want to look like Detroit in order to bring down our homelessness here in Seattle? That's a really good question. Let's jump on into it. So cause of homelessness, it's not drugs or mental illness, researchers say. It's lack of affordable housing. I don't buy that for one second, but we're going to read this article and we're going to talk about it. You know why? Because we're reasonable. All right, let's do it. And if things look a little funny with whatever it is, focus or aperture or lighting, it's because I set that all up because nobody else is here today for various various reasons. Ask just about anyone for their thoughts on what causes homelessness, and you'll likely hear drug addiction, mental illness, alcoholism, and poverty. All right, yeah, okay. A pair of researchers, however, looked at those issues across the country and found they occur everywhere. That's not, these are not unique things. Drug addiction, mental illness, alcoholism, poverty are not unique to the West Coast, although some would like to think that. But then you've got New York City and, you know, that kind of stuff. So a pair of researchers looked at those issues across the country and found they're everywhere. What does uh, very, what does vary greatly across the country, they found was the availability of affordable housing. All right. Okay. In their book, Homelessness is a Housing Problem, University of California Press, some authors looked at various contributing issues of homelessness, including mental illness and addiction, and looked at the per capita rate of homelessness around the country. By looking at the rate of homelessness per 1,000 people, they found communities with the highest housing costs had some of the highest rates of homelessness, something that might be overlooked when looking at just the overall raw number of homeless people. The way I see it is it's going to be hard to compete in these cities. These are expensive cities. Do we have an overriding responsibility to provide affordable housing to everybody? Or is this more like the Hunger Games? You know, I mean, you're going to have winners. You're going to have losers. And some of the losers, yeah, they're not going to make the cut, right? That's just how this goes. It's competitive in the West Coast. Housing is super expensive. So if you are struggling with addiction, or if you are struggling with a mental health care problem, I believe those are situations where government does need to step in. But instead, the government is saying, ah, good luck out there. It's okay. You'll be fine. I'm sure you'll be fine. You know, here's some solutions on how to better safely inject your drugs. That's what politicians are doing here in Seattle. And how is it working out? Not all that well. As an example, the 2019 count of people in shelters and on the street found a homeless population of 56,000 in LA County. Here's number two, 11,200 in King County, my county, 9,700 in Santa Clara County, and 4,000 in Multnomah County in Oregon. That's Portland, right? The homeless populations became similar when looking at per capita rates, with LA having six homeless people for every 1,000 residents, and other three smaller counties having five homeless people for every 1,000. What they had in common was a lack of affordable housing. Yeah, they've probably got a lot of things in common, and they've got a lot of things that aren't in common as well. We don't get as much sunshine here as Oregon does or L.A. County does. Yeah, does that mean there's more homelessness up here or more homelessness down there? San Diego County had about two and a half homeless people for every thousand residents, which was about the average per capita rate in the 2019 count. 
Aldern pointed out, the author pointed out, San Diego number would be greater if included the metropolitan area rather than the entire county. So we've got these stats and we're saying, hey, these expensive West Coast cities, they've got more homeless population because there's nowhere for them to go. All right. But does that mean it's taxpayers' responsibility to come up with a housing solution for everybody? Or do we focus on those who are addicted to drugs? And do we focus on those who are homeless? And then when those numbers are taken care of, when you get people into treatment, get them sober, right? Because that's what we should be doing instead of letting them kill themselves on fentanyl which is an ongoing major concern. It's a, it's a healthcare emergency. It's an emergency here in King County. You got people dying left and right. I mean, I guaranteed at some point, the number of people dying from drug overdoses could surpass COVID. I mean, those are huge numbers. You know, we shut the entire economy down because we had what, 12,000 people die from COVID, you know, in that main stretch there. How many people are dying from fentanyl overdoses right now? Yeah, it's not good. And are we shutting the economy down? No. What are we doing? Well, we're making sure that they're able to inject their drugs safely. Mm. Yeah, that doesn't seem to be the step in the right direction. And then we're misdirecting with articles like this about, ah, if we just had a little more affordable housing. What if we had affordable housing for all of these people? Do you think they would take it? Hmm. No, they wouldn't, would they? Because I read article after article about, okay, of the 45 people swept out of this camp, two accepted housing and one actually went. You see that all the time. 12 accepted housing, three showed up. 12 accepted housing, one is still in said housing. They don't want to be in affordable housing. They don't want to be in a housing at all. They want to be living their lifestyle. All right. Now, the argument, flip side to that argument would be, well, if they just had a roof over their head, they wouldn't be on drugs. Call I call nonsense to that. That is absolute bullshit. Sorry, it just is. It's If you are an addict and you are on a run, that's what you're going to be doing. If somebody gave you a roof over your head, you'd say, that's great. Now I got a place to crash and do my drugs. That's what we're talking about. So you got that. People with mental health care problems, they also fall into the addiction category oftentimes because they're looking for a way to escape the demons in their head. And that is a horrible thing. Those people should not be out on the streets. We should not be letting them live just willy-nilly on the streets, killing themselves and others. And you might say, oh, well, they're not really hurting anybody. No, 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 no. They are. They are. I drove by... There's a number of vans and there's a homeless encampment just near where I, um, I'm, I'm at all the time in Seattle. And I drove by. It was pretty late the other night, maybe 1030. I was going home and um, I, I drove past this big, like almost like a box van. And the guy had a window cut out of the side near the rear, like near the rear bumper. And he had on, he had some major flame going back there. Whether he was cooking dinner or cooking something else, I don't know. But all I could think of is, oh, geez, I need to hustle past this. Because you've got some stuff going on. Is he making meth? I don't know. Probably not. Because he wouldn't have his door open, the rear door open. And you could just see right in there. It's dark out, right? And you got this big flame going. Yeah. Who knows what it was? Maybe, maybe he was cooking hot dogs. I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. But, you know, you've got... You got propane tanks exploding. You got people shooting each other. You got, you got every imaginable crime going on out of these homeless encampments. And people just want to say, well, if we just had more affordable housing, this would all be better. So the author, a data science and policy analyst in Seattle, and the other person, assistant professor of real estate at the University of Washington's College of Built Environments, that gives you kind of a clue where we're at, right? I mean, these folks, are, ah, if we just had more housing, it'd be better. I don't think so. They are not suggesting that mental illness, addictions, and other issues are not contributing factors to homelessness, because you clearly can't do that, right? That's certainly not the point of the book, Holborn said, but I firmly believe that we can't treat our way out of this problem. 
Well, maybe not out of the problem entirely, but you can make a pretty big dent if you get everybody into treatment that needs treatment and you get all the crazy people off the streets into places where they are much, much safer from each other, from themselves, and from society. So there's that. You could fit all the, uh, you could fix all the addiction in San Diego right now and you'd still have a problem with homelessness because there just aren't places for people to go who have lower levels of income. Granted, that is a problem. That, no doubt there. It has become wildly expensive, wildly expensive. Like I worry about my children and their children being able to afford a city like Seattle. But then maybe it kind of comes down to, you know, world economics where you just don't live in some areas because they're too darn expensive and you have to make choices of where you're going to live, where your offspring's going to live. Moving to Texas, moving to Florida, hmm. not moving to Detroit. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're not going there, right? Detroit, although Detroit Rock City by Kiss. Ah, that is, that's one great song. Oh, that's a great song. Used to play that in third grade on a record player down in the basement where I had my bedroom and um, oh, I just crank it up and it was two floors away from the kitchen and my mom couldn't hear it. It was epic. Detroit Rock City. Lisa Jones, executive vice president of strategic initiatives at the San Diego Housing Commission, said she has not read the book, but does see a connection between housing and homelessness. Given a book report, didn't read the book. Ah, yeah, this is kind of what I think. <laughs> you know, it's like, all right. High cost. I haven't read the book either. I'm just kind of going through what this article is stating is a cause for homelessness. And you know what? I'm pretty much not buying it. There are some aspects to this. If you had more affordable housing, you know, like Detroit, but then again, do you want to look like Detroit? Yeah, there are homes there just literally being demolished, right? I mean, there's a lot of cities that their economics are such that homes are being just, you know, torn down more often than they are rehabbed. You'd never find that here in Seattle because the cost of the dirt is a half a million bucks for a decent lot, right? I mean, I've got little crappy houses around me where I live in Bellevue here that are 1.3, 1.4 million and they're teardowns. That's just how it goes. High, high cost of, of housing. It's super unaffordable for damn near everybody. Right? I mean, when households do experience homelessness, those factors make it even harder for them to exit homelessness by renting in the private rental market. Well, I think some, I think some self responsibility needs to come into the picture here because if you can't afford an area, you don't necessarily, ah, I guess I'll just become homeless here. I guess I'll just ah, go out in the street and live there. What about moving to an area where that you can afford? I know a lot of people have done that. I've had tenants that have done that here in the Bellevue area. The tenant that uh, would last lived in the house that I I live in now, one of my rentals, I you know I did a major remodel after they moved out because they'd lived there for like eighteen years. They moved to Spokane because Bellevue had become so expensive and the cost of living in Spokane much better for them. So they took, all right, this is what we can afford. This is what we make. This is probably what we're going to make the rest of our lives until retirement. The cost of living here doesn't, doesn't allow us to do that. Where do we go to make that work? Well, you do a little research. Maybe you contact Nick Johnson, who's got that YouTube channel, and ask him, hey, where should I live? Because he does some consulting. It's an interesting model he's got there. He um, talks about cities and then, you know, he talks with people and he'll consult with people on good, a good, good fit for them of where to live. Cause he's got all the stats and he's been through damn near every city in the United States, right? His YouTube channel is a testament to that. So high cost rental markets that far outstrip area median incomes and push renters into paying more than 50% of their income toward rent certainly are a significant contributing factor to making households at high risk of experiencing homelessness. Again, I say, all right, but if you know you're getting close to not being able to afford your place, maybe you do a life check and look and see where you can afford. Where can you go with your job set, with your skill set, and go make a living? I know that's not the easiest thing for everybody to do because people have family, they've got all kinds of other stuff. 
But at some point in time, you got to take some responsibility and you can't blame it on, ah, it's just super expensive here. Can't do it. Got to go live in my car. And I know that's a massive oversimplification, but I really think that, you know, making some decent choices are a major contributing factor here. I, the, the homelessness that, that I see and the folks that I see running around in Seattle, that's, these are not people with a nine to five job that are just struggling and out on their luck. These are people making a lifestyle out of it. Yeah, they're making a lifestyle out of it for one reason or another. They oftentimes, I think they just drop out. That's kind of the, when I'm running around and I'm looking and I'm kind of just seeing, hey, what's going on? Half the time they're crazy. Half the time, maybe more than half the time they're on drugs. And 99% of the time there's a combination of the two, right? And maybe that's not 99, maybe that's 85%. But yeah, you've got those factors going on. Let's see what else we got here before we can rip this article apart anymore. We need to continue to strive to build a homelessness response system that has a diverse spectrum of resources to meet a household's unique needs. Uh, okay, I think we do, but I think you need to focus on drug addiction and mental health care issues because those to me are what I'm seeing the majority of here in Seattle. And that's out on the streets. I am not seeing people and families with kids who just, you know, couldn't afford rent anymore. No, I'm seeing individuals, I'm seeing people that, you know, form friendships because there's, you know, strength in numbers in the homeless com communities. I see that all the time. And then I, you know, you read article after article, you now they're struggling with addiction, they've got a felony conviction. Not saying you can't overcome all that, but hey, let's be honest, those are major contributing factors and the ability to get sober and get clean, get a job, get going, become more responsible. A lot of that is what we're overlooking here in King County and in Multnomah County and in LA County. I mean, you've got, look at LA County, you've got Skid Row. Do I even need to say anything more than that? I mean, they've basically just quadrant off that area and said, all right, good luck with that. Police, oh, good luck with that. So, we're talking about uh, San Diego in 2019 called for significant investment in permanent solutions rather than shelters with a recommendation to build 5,400 units, including 3,500 units of permanent supportive housing over 10 years. Okay. And you've got how many homeless people now? 50 something thousand. All right. So what's that going to do? And the more units you build, the more that creates a vacuum. Well, ah, let's go there. There's housing there. Let's go there. So do you really want that? Or do you work on the root cause, which is oftentimes homelessness, I mean, not homelessness, but mental health care or addiction and fentanyl, fentanyl, that's your main driver right now. Super cheap, get it for five bucks a whack. I mean, they're making it in China and shipping it up through, through Mexico. I mean, these are just basic, basic things that we're aware of. And yet we go with, well, the stats show that in cities that have high cost of housing, homelessness is worse. Not taken away from that. Yeah, it's going to be way harder to afford housing. But you know that going into it. Bellevue, not affordable at all by any stretch of the imagination. Seattle, lot less likely to be affordable. So there you go. Make good choices. Make choices appropriate to, you know, what you've got going. So some of the things that then I get worried about is, okay, so you've got a lot of these jobs in these cities in Bellevue and call it Seattle. You've got jobs there that don't allow people to live even remotely close. Are those people going to start to commute hours and hours away? I mean, we already know that people from Olympia, our state capital, are commuting to Seattle like an hour and a half commute, maybe two hour commute each way. I mean, that's becoming a real LA. So the folks that are working our entry level jobs, where are they going to live? That is in an economic model. That is a major consideration. I don't know. I don't have the solution to that. But I know that the folks that I'm seeing out there, they are not there because they just couldn't find an affordable place to live. That's one contributing factor for sure.
Poverty, also a contributing factor of homelessness, but the researchers found areas with high poverty rates don't necessarily have high homelessness rates if housing costs are lower. As an example, Colburn said Detroit is one of the most impoverished cities in the country, but it has one-fifth the homelessness of West Coast cities on a per capita basis. All right, so we turn things into Detroit. Is that really the answer? Have you seen? Have you been to Detroit lately? No. Vast majority have not been to Detroit. Have you watched video of Detroit lately? It is grim. It's grim. Turning around, things turning around, but, or, you know, however you want to, however you want to look at it and, and, and identify that. But Detroit versus Seattle, you might say Seattle's got a tough look right now, but it's still got some, it's got areas that, that, that are tough. Yeah. But the vast majority of it, are not that direction. They're, they're, they're not Detroit style, right? Pretty soon it became very clear that rental costs and vacancy rates were by far the biggest predictor of rates of homelessness in a community, Colburn said. It's not the only factor. There are all sorts of complicated phenomenon, but it's a far more convincing phenomenon than anything else. Well, that at the end, you might be able to look at that. But it's the, uh, it's the underlying stuff that to me, all right, even if these folks had a roof over their head, they probably wouldn't conform within the rules and guidelines you need for that roof. And so to me, that's where I say affordable housing. No, these folks don't want to live in affordable housing. They don't want to get clean. They don't want to get sober. They are not able to make the mental switch to what it takes to stay in affordable housing because there's a set of rules and they'd much rather live out in the streets. That's my view. So you've got cities like Detroit with smaller homeless populations, he said. Okay, but have you seen Detroit? That's that's what I would counter there. So, and I'm a real estate guy, right? So I take this from a standpoint of, okay, here's where the market is. Now, the market's super expensive. Does that mean that we have an obligation to provide affordable housing for everybody who can't afford it? No, this is a free market. This is capitalism. This is how it works. So because you can't afford something doesn't mean you sit on the sidewalk and go, wow, I'm waiting for my affordable house. When's it coming? That's not an option. You got to be a big boy or a big girl and make decisions that make sense within your budget. Can you afford it? If you can't, go somewhere where your job set, your skill set allows you to afford it and not pay that 50% or more. What I'm afraid of is in all big cities where all the good jobs are, that's where affordable housing is the least. And it is an issue. I'm not saying it's not an issue, but I don't think it's the overriding factor that this article is saying that it is. As far as, all right, if we could just get some more affordable housing, we're putting up tiny homes left, right, and center. How's that working out with our homelessness population? Well, you're putting some of them there. You're putting a handful of them there. But from what I can see, we're just moving them around. I mean, all right, we're cleaning out that homeless encampment. Okay, that's interesting. Let's look at a map. That's close to downtown Seattle. And we've got all the tourists coming in for the summer. And we've got the employees coming back into their into their uh, high-rise office settings. So we need to get the downtown all squared away and looking better, which we've done. And I think a lot of other cities have done. Portland being the exception there, right? Portland being the exception for just about everything. But I don't need to tell you that because you kind of know. So there we are. It's not like just flipping a light switch, he said. And that's why a lot of times this is a scary message to people because it suggests we've got a long battle ahead of us. I think whether you believe that affordable housing is the cause of homelessness or drug addiction or mental health or whatever you think it is. Maybe there's some conspiracy. You'll, you'll have nothing and you'll love it. You know what I mean? That whole deal. You'll have nothing and you'll be happy. Whatever you believe it is. I think everybody knows, well, this is going to take a long time to fix if ever. Because it's it's gotten worse. It has gotten way, way worse. And incrementally, it seems to be getting worse. And a lot of it, I blame on the way that we're handling addiction. We're handling mental health care. We just don't have the space for these people to get them off the streets into some place that they can have the care that they should. That is compassion. 
getting people the care that they need, not letting them rot out on the streets in a tent, in a city that has, you know, so much to offer. And yet you've just got this entire population of people killing themselves on sidewalks, in parks, in parking lots. I mean, it's just, it's, it's wild that this is where we're at. And then, oh yeah, let's focus on the environment. Yeah, I'm going to leave you with that one. Thanks so much for being here. We'll catch up soon. Talk then. Bye for now.